So let's just start by having each of you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the film for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Evan? Uh, my name is Evan Muscagney. I am one of the co-directors and producers of Building a Bridge, a documentary film that follows around Father James Martin on his mission to make the Catholic Church more accepting of the LGBTQ community. And I'm Father Jim Martin. I'm a Jesuit priest. I'm an editor-at-large at America Media, and I work with uh, LGBTQ Catholics, as, uh, as you'll see in the film. So how did you two meet and get this project going? Uh, my mother, actually. So I am from Louisville, Kentucky, was raised in a very Catholic community there. Um, left the church a long time ago, and she's always been trying to pull me back and always telling me about um, voices in the church that she think would resonate with me and um, always was sending me posts from this cool priest she follows on Instagram, whether or not it was dealing with immigrants or refugees or LGBTQ stuff. And um, I was in New York and she was like, just go to one of his talks. And so I went to one of his talks and was just sort of blown away what I saw there and was very different from the Catholic church that I grew up in. And so um, immediately just knew that there was a story there. And uh, when did you first realize that you wanted to make a documentary about Father Martin? Um, so my co-director, Shannon, um, had a friend who was killed at the Pulse nightclub. And she had been thinking about ways to tell his story. And, um, you know, when I came across Father Martin, we both just saw an opportunity to bring both of these stories together and tell this bigger picture of um, something that came out of the Pulse nightclub shooting, which is what inspired, you know, Father Martin to make that first Facebook video and then ultimately the book. Um, so that's sort of what brought us together. And then we spent um, about two years following him around and um, after the book's release, going to different talks and um, book events and at his home and all things that you'll see, see in the film, interacting with other, um, you know, Catholic members of, uh, you know, Catholic people who were also longing to hear a message that he was uh, sending out of welcome and love and inclusion and respect and compassion and sensitivity. Absolutely. So Father Martin, what was your, uh, what were your original thoughts about being the subject of a documentary? Well, as Evan knows, um, you know, when Evan first proposed it, I thought, yeah, okay. And I, I had no idea how professional they were or how experienced they, they are, which they're very experienced. And, uh, you know, I often have people that come and say, we want to write a story on you or do a video or whatever. And sometimes these things never go anywhere, right? I actually spent about a year with a fella who was going to do a magazine article. I'll leave it uh, nameless. And it never happened. And so I thought, oh, okay, you know, I'm always open. And then, um, you know, as he started to kind of follow me around more and more and come to all these different talks and interview me, I thought, boy, this is, he's, he's pretty serious about this. And I think... Um, I think when it really became obvious for me, excuse my mic, um, was when I went to the world uh, meeting of families in Dublin and Evan and Shannon said, we're coming to Dublin. And I said, in all sincerity, why are you coming to Dublin? And they said, we're making a documentary. You know? <laughs> we're going to follow you around. And I thought, wow, um, they're, they're really serious about this. And also, I just liked, I really liked spending time with them and they seemed very sympathetic to uh, my ministry. Uh, and so I, I, you know, we became friends. I felt really comfortable with them. And uh, people asked me like, what was it like to be followed around? And I just, I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel like they were intrusive. You know, they would come to my talks and they'd interview me and, uh, and they'd interview other people too. Uh, so, you know, the movie's obviously not just about me, thank God. But I felt really <laughs> comfortable. And I felt like that this, the, the, the ministry was kind of in good hands. I'm also, look, I work at a magazine and I write books and I know the power of uh, film. And I thought yeah. if this can help, then, you know, terrific, you know, God bless them. Yeah, I think you can tell that the both of you had a really good relationship in the film just because of how comfortable the conversations unfold. Um, I, I have to ask, how did you get Martin Scorsese to become an executive producer on the film? Uh, well, his team got word that we were making this documentary and um, he's a fan of Father Martin's work. And they asked us if they could uh, see a rough cut. And so we scrambled together to edit uh, what we could and sent them a rough cut of the film. And um, he really liked it. And we had a talk and he gave us some feedback and we implemented some of his thoughts. And then, uh, yeah, he agreed to come on as an executive producer, which is obviously a huge honor for, for us and the film. And, you know, hope, hope it'll help us get this film seen by a, a 
much wider audience than we could without him. So, absolutely. So, um, the other thing I wanted to ask Father Martin was at what point in your ministry did you realize that the LGBTQ issue and inclusivity was going to be your focus? I'm sure it wasn't in the beginning. Yeah, I would say, and it, it's still one of my ministries. Uh, so I, I do other ministries. I, I, you know, I write, I work for America Media. I, I, it's been very strange because I didn't really choose to go into this ministry. As Evan said, I was re responding to the Pulse nightclub massacre and what I thought was the lack of response from a lot of Catholic leaders. And that led to a talk and that led to a book. And so I didn't really say to myself, all right, now I'm going to set out and be you know, this LGBTQ advocate. It just happened. And in my own uh, way of looking at things, it seems like God sort of led me into this. Uh, but it, I think when the, the, the response to the book, which was so polarizing, uh, you know, there are people who are very supportive. The book did not set out to be polarizing. Uh, the people were very supportive and the people were very um, opposed to it. I thought, well, I think this conversation needs to happen. And I didn't see too many people doing it, at least in the way I was doing it. There are many other people who do this kind of ministry, but I think it's to have someone in a collar do it um, gave it a different kind of perspective for people. And it, it, it made people more uh, grateful in a way, right? Uh, because they have someone, quote unquote, official who's speaking about it. But it also made people more angry because right. <laughs> people said, you know, how dare you do this? Even though I had the support of uh, my Jesuit superiors. And now, I mean, I can say I have the support of the Pope. I mean, he sent me a letter recently that I was able to share publicly. People are still, people still don't agree with it. So, you know, there's a lot of homophobia out there, basically. It doesn't take a rocket science to, rocket scientist to fit, figure this stuff out. When you started speaking out, did you expect so much negativity? No, I expected neither so much positivity uh, nor negativity. So one of the, you know, my book, A Building a Bridge is fairly mild. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't challenge church teaching. It's within the boundaries of church teaching. Uh, and yet I would give talks at parishes, particularly early on, uh, and Evan was at some of them that just stupefied me. Uh, I gave one of my, one of the stories I tell is I gave a talk at a parish in Boston called St. Cecilia's in Back Bay that's very LGBTQ friendly. I had only been there six months before giving a talk on another topic on Jesus. So I thought no one's going to come to this talk. I've been here. I was there six months ago. They know this stuff. It was packed. We had 700 people standing ovation. People were crying when they met me. And I, I just thought, wow. And then subsequent to that, these really crazy personal attacks online. I mean, just, just really over the top. And you know, you're a heretic, you're an apostate. So no, I didn't expect that. I really didn't expect it to be so controversial. And frankly, I mean, I've said this before. I mean, you know, I'm not really someone who likes controversy. And so this is probably the last ministry I would have chosen, you know, if I knew it was going to be so controversial, but you know, God seemed to have had other plans in mind for me. How do you deal with the negative backlash and all these, you know, hateful comments online and the letters that you get? Well, I ignore most of them. I mean, yeah. that, that's one way to deal with it. Uh, you know, if there's legitimate critique or questions or criticism, I'll answer it, obviously. But, you know, if it's just personal attacks, I've learned to ignore it. And also, you know, in my own spiritual life, um, I mean, this came up on my retreat a few weeks ago, you know, I realized Jesus had to deal with this. And, you know, Jesus tells us, look, I mean, explicitly, you know, if you're going to stand up for people who are persecuted, expect, expect opposition. So why would, you know, why would I be any different than Jesus? I'm not comparing myself to him, but he's our example. He's our model. Uh, but mainly it's being detached from it and being detached from the need for everybody to like you or approve of you. Yeah. You know? But most okay. of them I just ignore. Like I actually don't, people say, oh, did you see this terrible thing that someone said about you? And I was like, I don't really want to see that if it's just, you know, kind of cruel. Yeah. Turn the other cheek and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, right. Um, I wanted to pose the question to both of you. Why do you think, you know, homosexuality is such a hot topic in the church? I know it's written in the Bible, you know, but there's a lot of other things written in the Bible that we don't follow and that we don't practice like eating shellfish and tattoos and you know things like that that are also written in the bible what do you think it is about sex and homosexuality that makes people so extreme in their views evan you want to 
You go, go ahead. And I'll, okay. You have well, you know, uh, there's a, there's a great uh, quote, uh, Brian Massingale, who's uh, a wonderful uh, African-American and openly gay Catholic priest. He's celibate, of course, um, is, is a theologian is quoted in the movie. And he says it touches upon something that's very vulnerable. Right. And so we're all very vulnerable around issues of sexuality in our body. But I think, you know, the, the, the negative reaction is, is mainly fear. People are very fearful. They're fearful of their own complicated sexuality. They're fearful of, um, you know, change in the church. Um, and look, a lot of it's just hatred. I mean, not everyone who is uh, crit critical of what I'm trying to do and what other people are trying to do, you know, are motivated by hate. But a lot of people are, right? And this hate comes from this kind of deep discomfort with their own sexuality. Um, and unfortunately, as you were saying, uh, you know, some of it sort of egged on by a misinterpretation of, you know, what the what the Bible teaches. And you're exactly right. I mean, uh, you know, Leviticus teaches all sorts of things that we're not we're supposed to avoid, um, you know, and so all sorts of things that it approves of. So, for example, slavery, you know, I mean, yeah. the Bible, you know, talks about slavery in very positive ways in, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And no one says we should have slaves. Why? Well, because we understand those things differently. But, you know, with homosexuality, suddenly everyone becomes a literalist or a fundamentalist. And I think a lot of times that's just a kind of mask for their own homophobia, basically. So, but most of it's fear. It's fear. Evan, what are your thoughts? The same. I mean, and also, I mean, the only thing I could maybe add is that I think people are just generally reluctant and resistant to change, right? And these so-called fundamentalists or traditionalists within the church see, you know, any sort of progress or any sort of change as just negative or bad and something they have to fight. And then you couple that with the homophobia and the fear of the other and the fear of the unknown. And it just creates this recipe for a disaster of hatred and bigotry and, you know, all the negative things that were spewed at Father Martin that you'll see throughout the film. Um, so kind of speaking of that throughout the film, the scenes in the interviews with Father Martin are cut against interviews with Michael Boris, who's the founder and the president of Church Militant, who has a very different approach to LGBTQ in the Catholic Church. Um, Evan, how did you gain so much access to Boris and what was spending time with him like? Yeah, well, it wasn't very difficult. Um, Michael Boris was very open and honest with us and invited us to come up. And, you know, I think if anything, um, there was a concern that we were, were we giving him a platform to spew hatred and bigotry? But as the story was unfolding in real time, we saw that he was having a real impact on this ministry that Father Martin was doing. He was getting some talks canceled. He was having protesters show up, encouraging online petitions. And, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, you just try and follow the story as it's happening. You don't try and dictate the terms of it. So, um, yeah, I think it, it was important for us to include that. And, um, let people know what Father Martin's up against because they might not see Father Martin's Instagram comments or Facebook comments or the spam emails he gets. But uh, I think it was important to show that side of the story as well. Do you know if he has seen the film? I do not actually do not. Know. I'm curious what his reaction would be. <laughs> um, Father Martin, have you ever met Michael Morris? I did. I was in Rome, um, actually there a couple of days before I met the Pope. And uh, I use this word in the strict sense, and he accosted me on the street. Um, he came up, he ran up to me, and uh, people in his, and he started shouting questions at me and yelling at me. And people uh, on his, uh, I guess, on his team were filming me. Wow. Yeah, it was really, it was unbelievable. And I said, Why are they filming me? He said, They're not filming you. I said, Why are people holding cameras up? <laughs> Why are they holding their cameras up? And then, you know, of course, the footage appeared in some way. I haven't seen it, but people have told me that the footage is there. And, uh, and then he makes some kind of insulting remarks about me. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen it, so I probably shouldn't quote it. But um, right. yeah, so I met him that one time and he just started yelling at me. What are your thoughts on him and, you know, that approach to LGBTQ and the church in general? Well, I obviously disagree with it. Uh, I think, um, you know, his... You know, I think much of his ministry, um, and he describes himself as a, I guess, a, he's gay, and but he, I don't know how he de would describe himself as a former gay person or someone who has a, has had some sort of conversion to not be gay. I'm, I'm still a little unclear about how he describes himself. Uh, 
Right. Uh, but he talks about being gay and being in relationships. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's pretty hateful. I mean, the, the, the kinds of things that he puts out um, on videos uh, and in print um, and online are, they're hateful. Uh, and, you know, it's name calling and belittling people. Um, and so it's, it's disturbing, uh, but it's, it's certainly a, um, an indication of the, of the depth of homophobia in the church and the inability of people to, um, you know, treat LGBT people with any sort of respect. I mean, really, if you watch his videos, you'll see that uh, they're really disrespectful of LGBTQ people. Yeah. And talking with that much hate-filled rhetoric just seems like the opposite of Jesus's message and what the church should be doing. Doesn't um, it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why so many people feel so connected and inspired by the work that you're doing. Um, I hope so. I, I think that uh, it is, you know, you may, as they say, but I think in the New Testament, uh, you know, by your fruits, you will know them right? A, a good tree uh, produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. And I think that the fruit of their ministry is really anger and hatred. Uh, because, you know, they're not, they're not coming to me and saying, oh, I, I saw that interesting video, you know, on Church Militant, and I have this question for you. No, I mean, they're coming and saying, you disgust me, and you're going to hell and, you know, and, and sending me, you know, death threats and things like that. So that's the fruit of that ministry. Yeah. And I think we have to take that seriously, what, you know, where people, what people are taking from that kind of, if you even can call it a ministry. So besides being accosted in the street, what other challenges or unforeseen obstacles did you run into in making this documentary for both of you? Oh, I mean, like the pandemic, we had a bunch of shoots planned uh, right before in March, actually. I, I mean, we, I think we had one the day plan for the day the city ultimately shut down here in New York at um, St. Paul, which is featured in the group OSP is featured in the church. I mean, it's featured in the film, but uh, I think that was obviously the biggest obstacle. And then just trying to figure out, all right, well, we have enough here to tell a story. Let's get into the editing room. Let's make the most of this lockdown. Um, and we're really happy and pleased with the way the film came out, despite those challenges. Do you have anything to add, Father Martin? Yeah, I was amazed. At, don't laugh. I was amazed at how good the film was. I mean, I, when I saw it, I, my, my joke was, Devin, I said, oh, my gosh, this is a real documentary. You know, it has it's beautiful looking. Uh, there's there's a there's an original score that the, the, they have beautiful graphics. It's edited beautifully. It tells a story. And look, it's it's more than just my story, too. I mean, we should underline that it's it's many people's stories. Uh, and so it's not just me. And I, I found it really, it, it, in a sense, it, it captivated me, you know, the way it told a story and the way it kind of led up to things. And uh, I was just amazed at how good it was. You know, I thought, as I said, I thought it was going to be some YouTube video. And it's this beautiful film. It's a beautiful, everyone who, who's seen it has said the same thing. Like, wow, it's a real documentary. It's like, yeah, exactly. It is. It's beautiful. And I've seen a lot of documentaries working in festivals for the last five years. And this really stood out to me. So um, I, I wanted to add a question about how the documentary ends. So the documentary ends with Father Martin meeting Pope Francis. Uh, what was that experience like going to the Vatican? Uh, Life-changing. And I, I'll tell you a very funny story. Uh, I don't think Evan would mind. Uh, so I was in the Vatican and, you know, Evan and I become friends and I, you know, also let him know what's going on with LGBT stuff, you know, particularly when he was filming the movie, because I thought, you know, he would want to know the news, you know. Uh, so I texted him from, I said, guess what? And I didn't know if it was going to happen. I met the Pope and Evan said, Oh, I can't believe we weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they hired a, a film, you know, a, a filmmaker, I guess you would say a photographer, a videographer in Rome who followed me around. We were able to get that footage in the day after I met with the Pope. So it was a transforming. It was really transforming. And you know, I can say this now because he said this in a letter to me recently publicly that he was very supportive of the ministry and said, I want you to continue this ministry. And I just felt uh, I, it's hard to describe uh, he, he, being with him one on one and talking about LGBT stuff was beautiful enough. Well, being with him, period, was beautiful enough. I could have just sat in his presence for a half an hour <laughs> uh, and then to have him, uh, you know, in a sense, affirm the ministry. 
was tremendous. I'll tell you something that um, I haven't shared before, but uh, I can now. Uh, when I got back to the Jesuit community in Rome, which is right across the street, literally across the street from uh, St. Peter's Basilica, uh, this Jesuit who I really admire said, um, well, what, what happened? And I told him the story without getting into details that I won't share with you. But at the end, and I said, and he said, I want you to continue this ministry. And this guy said to me, do you realize the Pope just gave you a mission? The Pope just gave you a new ministry. And in the Jesuit world, we, that, we take that extremely seriously. We, make, we take a vow to, to say yes to whatever mission the Jesuit, the Pope gives us. And he, he said he just gave you a new mission. And I didn't, it didn't kind of click. So that's really, um, yeah, it's really encouraged me. And uh, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that we got that footage in. It's just, it's amazing to me that you know, we were able to, to pull it off, that Evan was able to pull it off. And that's where we filmed it, right? Is that the Jesuit house right across? We, we filmed it on yeah. top of the, the roof. Um, and there's, a, it's a, in, another funny story. We are right across the street from St. Peter's Basilica. And our rooftop is a very famous um, place where people rent out to film because it overlooks St. Peter's Square. It's stunning. It's this stunning view. It's, you know, like a block away. And Evan said to me, <laughs> it looks like a green screen. It's so amazing. <laughs> you know, this big dome of St. Peter's. And <laughs> so I knew he'd like it. I knew he'd like it. I said, I know exactly where we should film. So that's, that's where the movie ends, which is really, I think, kind of uplifting for people. That should be your Zoom background. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> so um, now that this project is wrapping up and getting out there, what is next for both of you? Evan? Uh, I'm working on a few new projects in development and to in production, but um, with this film, we're hoping to launch a robust impact campaign. So as soon as we secure a uh, distribution deal and find an ultimate home for the film, the goal is to do everything we can to make sure it's seen by as many people as possible. You know, uh, like for me, it's important for this film to be seen in churches in places like Kentucky and Catholic schools and place where uh, they might not know Father Martin yet or might not be aware of his ministry. Um, but that's the hope once we get um, the film out there is that we can really tar uh, make a targeted list of, of groups we want to see this film and hopefully try and get it shown, you know, in as many community screenings across the country and hope, honestly across the world as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And as for me, I mean, I'm, cont I'm, you know, continuing my ministry as a Jesuit priest and working in America media. Uh, I'm writing a book on Lazarus, which has not too much to do with uh, LGBT stuff, but you know, there's, there's some resonances. And in terms of the ministry, um, one of the next things I'm doing is I'm hoping to start a website um, that's kind of a resource uh, for LGBTQ Catholics with videos and links and articles and things like that. And then I do, I'm still doing a ton of talks, um, mostly online. Uh, one of the, the, the effects of the pandemic has been that it's kind of lowered people's um, resistance to talks online. And so I, I've probably done about 150 to 200 talks to schools and parishes and on LGBT stuff, um, which has been really gratifying. Uh, so yeah, the ministry continues and I just wait, basically wait to see where God's gonna take it. What is the hope for both of you that audiences take away from building a bridge? Well, I, I hope that people see that, uh, it's very simple. I, I hope that people see that LGBTQ people are part of the church and that LGBTQ people feel welcomed in the church. Uh, and also that it challenges people who are uh, in opposition to this ministry, particularly the stories. So I'm, I'm more interested in the people seeing the, the stories of the LGBTQ Catholics that Evan interviewed. You know, I think that's for me the most compelling part when people hear stories because you know stories convert. And so I'm hoping that the movie uh, affects some conversions. And not, I'm not talking about conversion therapy. I'm talking about like the, the kind of conversion Jesus is talking about, the metanoia, change of mind and heart. What about yeah. you? I mean, I think for me, a few things. I mean, I, I uh, hopefully people like me, maybe in their 20s, who are very cynical and sort of anti everything about the Catholic Church can, can you know, maybe change their mind a little bit and, and not have such a negative view of everything. And and for me, what I, I'm really interested in as I get older is, is how you meet people where they are to change. Like, how do you change people's hearts and minds, right? And it's not, 
preaching to them or telling them how much smarter I am than them online. It's, it's meeting them where they are and actually genuinely trying to build bridges, bridges and connect with people. And uh, how do you change institutions from within? And I think Father Martin's a great example of, of how you can do all of those things. I agree. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, we're really excited for people to see the film at the festival. Um, and both of you are welcome in Chagrin at any point. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us.